Now, <coughs> let's go to example 8.37. This is also a 10 mark sum. And uh, this is a quite, if you are kind of an investigator, you know, if you want to be a Sherlock Holmes, this kind of a sum will interest you. You know, if you are a kind of a detective. See, there is a postmortem report uh, that is being carried out by a doctor, right? Postmortem which is being carried out. And they have to find the time of death of a disease. So, there is a dead person. They have to find out the time at which that person died. Okay. So, they record the first temperature at 10 o'clock in the morning. And it is 93.4 degree F Fahrenheit. After 2 hours, the temperature becomes 91.4 degrees. Right. So, obviously, the temperature keeps reducing because the person is dead. Right. Now, they have given the room temperature to be 72 degree Fahrenheit. Now, what we have to do is, we have to find out the time of death. Therefore, there is a deceased person and the temperature of that body is cooling down. Right. Now, they take the first temperature at 10 o'clock and then 2 hours later, they take the second temperature. So, with these two input values plus the room temperature, we have to find at what time the person was dead, right? It's quite an interesting sum, okay? So, whenever there is a change in temperature, you know that you have to apply the Newton's law of cooling. If you remember the Newton's law of cooling, right? Please don't mind my handwriting. I'll uh, hope to write neatly at least the formula. So, the formula is going to be the rate of change of temperature of a given body is going to be proportional to the difference in temperatures. Right? I'll repeat again. The rate of change that is dt by dt the rate of change of temperature of a cooling body is going to be proportional to the difference in temperature so what is t and s t is the temperature of your cooling body and s is going to be the surrounding temperature in this case it's going to be the room temperature right so for this specific sum we can write this equation as dt by dt right capital t is proportional to t which we are not aware of at the moment minus 72 degree f where s is nothing but your room temperature right is given here so this is my equation now what i'm going to do is dt by dt is equal to a constant k into t minus 72 right now can we write since we know that A is equal to C e par k t. You remember how we got this, right? You can refer to example 8.36 or no, example 8.34 and 35 where I have explained this, right? So, in this particular case, we can write this equation as dt by dt is equal to k into t minus 72 or it will become t is equal to I can write it like this t minus 72 is equal to c e per k t right now at time t is equal to 0 that is at 10 o'clock when they took the temperature you know that the temperature was 93.4 degree Fahrenheit, right? At 10 o'clock, the temperature was 93.4. So, when I substitute that in this equation, I get 93.4 minus 72 is equal to C e par 0 because T is 0. So, C becomes equal to what is 93.4 minus 72? It is 21.4. So, we know that now, now we know that C is equal to 21.4. Just have it as it is. Now, after 2 hours, they are taking the temperature again. So, 2 hours in the sense, it is 120 minutes, right? So, after 120 minutes, the temperature now becomes 91.4. 
so if we are going to substitute it in this equation right you get t minus 72 that is 91.4 minus 72 is going to be uh, 19.4 right so we're going to say 19.4 is equal to c e power 120 k because t is equal to 120 right now you have c is also you have found out it's 21.4 so you get 19.4 is equal to 21.4 into e power 120 k so let's bring this 21.4 this side so it goes down 21.4 is equal to e power 120 k in order to find k i'm going to take log on both sides so it becomes log of 19.4 by 21.4 is equal to log e power 120k can be plainly written as 120k right therefore if i want to find k k will be nothing but 1 by 120 into log 19.4 by 21.4 okay yes right we got this here but in the sum i think they have given the value of log of 19.4 by 21.4 so let's substitute that so it becomes i've just written down the values as it is okay now we have found k we have found c right now what is it that we eventually have to find in the sum we have to find the time we have to estimate the time of death basically if we can find out how much time has elapsed after the time of death we can calculate the time of death so for this purpose what we're going to do is we're going to assume another variable say t dash okay t dash to be equal to the elapsed time after death so which basically means the time that has gone since that person died so i'll just write it here elapsed time after death so i'm assuming it to be t dash so we know that if we substitute it in this equation here right we know that at time t1 t dash right basically your temperature of the body becomes your normal body temperature which is 98.6 degree right so now if you substitute it in that equation that you already here had here which is this equation you can say that 98.6 is equal to 72 plus 21.4 e power k is you can leave it as it is now and t dash okay so can i take 98.6 to the other side okay it becomes 98.6 minus 72 is going to be 26.6 right so i can write it as 26.6 i'm also bringing this 21.4 down 21.4 is equal to e power k t dash so let's take log on both sides so this becomes log of 26.6 by 21.4 and uh, is equal to just kt dash and if i want to find just t dash i'm going to bring the k to the other side so here it becomes 1 by k into log of 26.4 by 21.4 and that will be equal to t dash but you also knew that k was this value right so let's substitute this value over here you will get t dash is equal to 1 by k so let's take 120 on top and i think in the sum they've also given you the value of 26.6 by 21.4 log that is nothing but 0 0.0945 into 2.303 by this value here right minus 0 0.0426 into 2.303 right 
obviously 2.303 gets cancelled so you can either multiply and divide directly or use log so you will get approximately around 266 minutes so from the time uh, you know the person has read it has been 266 minutes 266 minutes when you divide it by 60 you get it is nothing but 4 hours right 4 hours and 26 minutes so and you know that first recorded temperature when they got it it was at 10 o'clock so 10 o'clock minus 4 hours 26 minutes is going to be 5 34 a.m. So they recorded the first temperature at 10 a.m. Right. So that minus 4 hours and 26 minutes is 5:34 a.m. So this is also the approximate time of death. Okay. So basically, what we had to do in this sum is uh, we had to use the Newton's law of cooling and get the uh, base equation which we're going to solve then at time t equal to 0 when they took the first temperature it was 93.4 so substituting that in this equation we found out the value of c then after 2 hours when they took the temperature was 91.4 again substituting that in this equation above and using the value of c that we have already found out we have derived a value for k now with these two values we had to find the uh, time of death so to find the time of death we first said we'll find the time which is elapsed since you know that person died so that we called it t dash and then at t dash right uh, that is uh, after t dash minutes after the death the body would come to its normal temperature right 98.6 so in that case we assume capital T to be 98.6 and uh, substituting the same in that equation and substituting the values that we got for c and k we found out that t dash was minus 266 minutes which is nothing but approximately around 4 hours so you subtracted that from 10 o'clock and that's the final answer